Kanal Mehta for the 6 o'clock news. We have a special segment for you today called the present and future of flu vaccines, brought to you by McMaster's Demystifying Medicine. Before I get into the present and future of flu vaccines, I want to briefly go through what the flu is. This is the what. Uh, the flu, also known as influenza virus, falls under the family of viruses called orthomyxoviridae viruses. Every year, we need a new flu vaccine to protect ourselves from this virus, and every year, its effectiveness can range. This year, for 2017-2018 flu season, the CDC, or Center for Disease Control, has estimated that the flu vaccine is about 36% effective. Now, why do we need a new flu vaccine every year? This is the why. Well, to simply explain, the virus which causes the flu, or influenza, is able to change every year, causing old vaccines to be ineffective at providing protection. There are two components of influenza which are important when discussing vaccines. This is the hemagglutinin protein and the neuraminidase protein. Now, you see, viruses are made up of many proteins that stay the same, but the hemagglutinin protein and neuraminidase protein are able to mutate causing the virus to become somewhat novel and evade old vaccines which targeted different strains of the virus. This concept is called antigenic drift and is the cause of the seasonal flu that we see today. With that known, the most common flus in the human as of recent are H3N2 and H1N1. This changing of the neuraminidase and hemagglutinin protein makes it quite difficult to predict which strain is coming in any future season. Yet, vaccines are still the best way to protect ourselves against the flu. Let's talk about what flu vaccines are actually presently used in today's society. This is the present. So to begin, the first vaccine we'll be talking about is the trivalent, quadrivalent, inactivated vaccine. And the inactivated vaccine portion stands for the virus particles not actually being alive inside the vaccine. It actually covers two strains of influenza A and one to two strains of influenza B for protection. Like we established before, epidemiologists have to guess which strains of viruses are actually going to be present in any given flu season. So just like that, we need to figure out which two strains of influenza A virus will actually go into the vaccine and which one to two strains of influenza B will be present in that given flu season. It is given through an intramuscular injection, so through here, through here. And again, the virus is killed in lab and put into the vaccine. Now the other vaccine I'm going to talk about is the live attenuated vaccine, also known as Flumist. Now this is actually given not through intramuscular injection, but through a nasal spray, and is usually recommended to 2 to 17 year olds. This live attenuated vaccine includes virus particles that are temperature sensitive, so they are alive. They are live attenuated, but the attenuated portion stands for them being mutated in a certain way that they won't actually infect the body. Now that we know the two vaccines currently used in society, let's look at if there's any research going on to better these vaccines. Let's talk about the universal flu vaccine. This is the future. A universal flu vaccine has been a very hot topic in today's scientific academia. Now there are researchers out there such as the Icon School of Medicine located in Mount Sinai, New York, along with the McMaster Immunology Research Center found here at McMaster University in Hamilton, Ontario, which are one of numerous bodies that are going into research of the universal flu vaccine. Now what is a universal flu vaccine and how is it different from a seasonal flu vaccine? The universal flu vaccine is able to target many strains of influenza viruses, but how can it do that? Well, when we looked at the seasonal flu vaccine, we saw that it targeted the head domain of hemagglutinin protein that's found on the influenza virus. Well, the universal flu vaccine will target the stock domain of the hemagglutinin protein, which actually doesn't change among many strains of the influenza virus. So what does that mean? That means that we'll see a broad range of immunity to many influenza strains just from one vaccine that researchers are saying can give long-term immunity. But are there any clinical trials for this vaccine? Let's explore further. The Jenner Institute at the University of Oxford, along with a biotech company by the name of Vaxitech, are actually underway for human clinical trials for a universal flu vaccine. 
they have named it MVA NP plus M1. Now, this universal flu vaccine uh, has already been tested for its safety and efficacy through early clinical trials, and now they're moving on to the mid-stage called phase 2b, where they'll be recruiting approximately 5,000 British participants to see how it impacts them during the flu season. They'll also recruit more participants during the 2019 flu season. This is the first time that a universal flu vaccine has progressed beyond the phase 1 clinical testing. Thank you so much for tuning to the present and future of flu vaccines. Here's a quick summary. We've looked at what kind of virus the flu is, including its viral name, influenza. We've discussed why it changes yearly, thanks to antigenic drift. We've outlined the present vaccine options, including the inactive as well as the live attenuated vaccine. And lastly, we've delved into the future of the field by highlighting a promising universal flu vaccine. Thanks again for watching. If you liked this video, please remember to hit the like and subscribe button to the McMaster Demystifying Medicine YouTube channel to see more amazing videos.